It was uh, this date 60 years ago that the Beatles held the top five positions in the Billboard Hot 100 chart. And this was uh, one of those songs back in 1964. I want to hold your hand. The top five were Please Please Me at five. I want to hold your hand was four. She Loves You was three. Twist and Shout was number two. And Can't Buy Me Love was the number one song. All five at one time. That's pretty good. I Want to Hold Your Hand was the first Beatles 45 we had in our house. I'm not sure who, I didn't buy it, but probably my brother, I don't know. But mm -hmm. it was the first one we actually played in our house. 45. Yeah. How many people in this room know what a 45 is? <laughs> well, well, I know one who does not. Well, there's no idea what a 45 is, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. We're all looking at Lily right now. She's going. I don't know. What's a forty? It's a little record that you put. She's like, oh, and a record what's was a, a record. <laughs> it's like a CD. Okay, a CD was it's like, like a, a, <laughs> a frisbee. Yeah. Uh, our guest in this segment is um, very familiar to many members of our audience. Aubrey Maria Amelia Irvin from uh, used to be the Apollo, but now has a new gig. Yeah. When, when did you leave the Apollo? Uh, at the end of last year. And you went to the By George Museum. I did. Yes. Yeah. Just. Uh, called the By George Children's Museum, and it underwent some renovations and such. Is it open and operating and everything to the public now? No, it's not opening until May. We're still going under a few renovations, but okay. I'm excited about yeah. opening. What's yeah. your opening day, do you know? I don't know quite yet, but it'll be sometime in May for sure. What were some of the changes that happened? Um, the city's just working on the train station. There were some renovations that needed to happen. There was a couple leaks, and so... Um, and then we're going to be bringing a lot more exciting things to the George. So okay. I'm excited. Tell us what kind of programs you'll be. Um, we're going to have a over. summer program this summer, which is really fun. We'll have um, eight weeks of summer camp. So. Yeah. And what are you do, going to do at it? What does the museum? What's the museum's mission, so to speak? Um, the museum is. It was started with the trail, the Heritage George Washington Trail. Um, but the core of it is that George Washington was around this area as a teenager. So that's kind of what started it, plus the trains. And so it has like a lot of history there. Um, but I'm looking to bring a lot more things in the history now, more art and STEM and mm -hmm. robotics and I don't know what else. I can't remember. <laughs> Lots. Yeah. yeah. That, that person you're asking questions of is Lily. Yeah. <laughs> Lily Irvin. Good morning, Lily. Good morning. You already failed your first test. What's a 45? <laughs> well, we didn't ask. That's not her fault. <laughs> well, whose fault is it? It's not mine, Matt. Well, she's, she's just young. It's a she's test not... question. you got to pass the test. We, we have strong standards here, Lily. I'm sorry. You for one. You're going you're gonna to get back to 500, dear. All right. Uh, so uh, what's your preferred method of listening to music? Um, I like to use Spotify or... Yeah, just Spotify. Yeah, that's usually. the exact answer I thought you'd give. <laughs> okay, you're back. She's one for two now. All right. Everybody's happy now, Matt. All right, so uh, tell me your involvement at the museum, Lily. Um, right now, I currently have no involvement, but this summer, I will be a summer camp leader. Right. And what are you going to be leading? A STEM camp with some of my friends, and we're just going to dive into like a whole bunch of different kinds of STEM and um, different sciences and types of sciences and branches and experiments. What age groups? Um, what age we're groups? doing 6 to 14 is what we'll be opening registration to, so... Six That's to fourteen. A pretty good group. We'll... Does the program vary for six-year-olds versus fourteen-year-olds? Yeah, we're going to just see what we get in the registrations, and then kind of, you know, pivot <laughs> depending on what we get. So, yeah. what are some kind of programs that you can do with those age groups for STEM? Um, there's lots of experiments that are very easily um, modified depending on age groups, especially in like biology and in chemistry. Like a lot of that stuff can easily be amped up to make harder or like watered down to be easier for kids. Um, so, like a lot of the experiments we're planning on doing are things I've done in class at school, mm -hmm. but just a little bit watered down per se so that little kids can understand it. But if our age group ends up being older, we can give it the full effect. That's a good time. Is that a good time show choir t-shirt? It is. Yeah. Well, how, how long were you in there? Um, I'm still in it. Still in um, it? I'm on my third year, and next year will be my fourth year. Congratulations. They're, they're always awesome. They're, that's just an amazing program. We had the, the teacher in, I can't remember her name. Miss Callan? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I guess about a month ago, or maybe less, talking about that. So uh, how many kids can you take for this uh, summer program? Um, we're going to be taking 24 kids a session, mm -hmm. So, um, and there's two sessions each week, so there'll be 48 kids we could take each week for the eight weeks we'll be offering camp. And how much does the camp cost? Um, it's $150 a session. And how do you register? Um, I'll have it online once we open up, so I'm excited about that. What will the website be? Uh, ForTheKidsByGeorge.org. Is that the number four or F-O-R? F-O-R. 
for yeah. the kids by george, by george. dot org gotcha. yeah mr gilstrap i am totally flat-footed on this i had i've never heard of it so i've heard trains so is this down in it's Martin? at the train station at the caperton train station yeah. down in martinsburg yeah okay so a sample program would be of just going through this the website is really kind of not open or not functioning yet so i'm kind of no we're working on here. getting that open but, but i see you know journey through history live underground railroad experience um, educates children i guess that's an article from the journal so is that the kind of program you're doing is to yeah i really want to come back when we're ready to open um today we're actually here though to promote good times um show choir camp mm -hmm. so oh <laughs> that's why she's wearing her shirt yeah. okay no, we're pivoting yeah All right. we're pivoting we do a lot of show prep here so <laughs> well no i wanted so, to get i wanted to okay. get both in all right oh thank because, you yeah, yeah. because uh, i think it was gula angle who said you need to get in touch with aubrey and talk about this by george i think it was gula who said i think it was meg was it meg oh, yeah it was, it was meg. meg yeah meg Whitler. yeah yeah meg Whitler. yeah okay mm -hmm. so anyway uh from that to that, go ahead and uh, get on the Good Times Show Choir stuff. Um, next Gen is a camp that we're doing next weekend. Yep, next weekend. And what's the dates for that again? The 13th and the 14th. <laughs> Thank you. And it's going to be a camp for all ages mm -hmm. to kind of prep for show choir in high school. Um, it's open from kindergarten, I believe, or maybe younger, all the way up to eighth grade. And they'll be in like they'll be sectioned by age, so there'll be elementary, intermediate, and high school level, and they'll be able to play games and they'll learn a show. And then on, so Saturday is going to be like our learning day where the students of Good Times will like teach a number, um, teach them vocals, like give them the full experience. We'll play some games, we'll eat lunch, and then Saturday or Sunday, my bad is gonna be our performance day where the kids and the parents will get to see the Good Times competition show we've been working on all year, as well as the kids will be able to show their parents the show that they've been working on all Saturday. Which is very uh, professionally done, I might add. You guys are awesome and how you do these things, it's incredible. How much prep time do you put into getting ready for a show? Um, it wow. usually takes the whole school year, but this year and some other years, we start before school even starts with like a summer camp, like the week or two before school starts. So it takes like eight months, I guess. It takes almost a full year because like um, last summer, Miss Cowan was already working on the show, planning the costumes, the set, all that. And then she introduces it to the kids like July. Mm -hmm. And so from July on, they're working really hard. And even before we know the show theme, we're doing like conditioning and stuff. Like we were out on the football field at like 6 a.m. this summer, like doing conditioning. What were you doing? Um, just like cardio stuff because show choir requires a lot of cardio and like physical strength to make it through a full show. Sure. Do you do you do uh, like quicker stuff? Are you, are you running like sprints and agility kind of things? You're not just running laps around the track, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, usually we try to make it fun, but there yeah. is a lot of hard work in there too. Yeah, because what you do is more like a sprint than it is than an, an, an endurance event. I mean, there's both involved, but when you're doing your shows, there's a lot of quick movements involved. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How, how many kids are in the show? Um, I think we have about, oh, I'm going to say 30s. it wrong. We have like 32 singer dancers. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have a pretty big band. I want to say there's like eight or nine people in band. And then we have nine tech members. Mr. Harvey, did you have a question? Well, with, with, with the camp, if, if you were a parent of a kin kindergartner, what, what would they be exposed to instruments or just singing or the coordination prep part for the camp? Um, I think it depends what there is. You are allowed to like sign up to be a tech member, so you would shadow the tech for a day. Or if the I was bringing my kindergartner to the next gen camp, um, when you register, there's a link and it has choices. So you get to say, oh. I want my kindergartner to be a performer, I want my kindergartner to be a tech, or I want my Sorry. kindergartner to be a what's a band member. Yeah. And so the, there's the categories that you sign up for, and we've kind of prepped to put these kids in the different categories, and then they will shadow either the tech, the band, or the uh, performers. And it'll all be like on level, like the choreography that um, the elementary choreographers have prepared will be totally safe for kindergartners. It'll that's be a, really fun for the kids, I oh, think. Oh, I imagine, that, sound, that does sound really fun. Um, that That's so neat that they also have the ability to follow like the- Their people. interests, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, and not just um, kind of one size fits all. What is the cost for something like that? It's fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Yeah, you do get a T-shirt and lunch too, though, mm -hmm. and a goodie bag, I think. 
So at y'all's level, <clears throat> at the show choir level, That's are correct. there are there some who get into it? They're primarily dancers who also like to sing, and then there are some who are singers who also like to dance. Some are better at one than the other, right? There is a lot of that. A lot of us also stem from like theater, but also some kids are actually just athletes or football players who just thought it would be fun and tried it and ended up loving it. So it's actually a really big mix because a lot of, almost all of us are in at least two or three other school organizations like student council or like honor societies or sports. Everyone seems to have like a sport or does dance or does theater. There's like, everyone also does something else, which is really cool. It's, this group is so driven and incredibly diverse. Like it's amazing all that they accomplish in a week with the different things they do. Is there a place for the really good singer who can't dance and the really good dancer who can't sing? Um. Usually, we have enough time in the year where it's if you're lacking in one area, by the time it's like showtime, you will learn. Um, and there's also, of course, there's like solos that can highlight those that are like if you like fit that solo, you'll get the solo, whether it's singing or dancing, and that's really cool. Um, but I don't think anyone in our group is lacking, which is really amazing. Yeah, those people thin themselves out. Yeah, John, I, I would suggest solo for you. John can so, say, I, I, so, I, solo that no one can hear you. In, no, in no, the day, that was me. Yeah. 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 Gilstrap, can, did you know Gilstrap's a singer? I'm not, I'm not, I, I, no, I did not. I'm on not national sure. television. So what he's asking is he he, he really was. No, no, no. Those, day, those are days are long gone. But it's no, the no, dancing no. that you lack. Is that what you're saying? Back in the day, I did, yes. You not, like, not, not. Not at that level. This dude was on national television singing. So, so the cutoff is eighth grade. That's for this camp. Mm. Sorry, John. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, you have an adult it's, camp. It's, <laughs> if there's enough interest, I'm sure we'd be willing to do it. <laughs> no, 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 no. That would be an interesting camp, though. Teaching adults to sing and dance. I'd pay to watch it. Never <laughs> sung <and> dance before. <laughs> That would be very interesting. And then put that on YouTube. That well, you know, that's you get okay. You go to a writers' conference and yeah. you and you get a bunch of authors and you teach them how to sing and dance. And then mm -hmm. you, that's a reality TV show, right there. You take people, you got to pay a lot of money, man. Take people who are accomplished in one field and you put them in an entirely different field where they don't know anything and you you try to get them up to speed. That would be a pretty neat show. Yeah, it would be kind of I don't know. Would it be hard? To, probably really hard to teach like me to do what you guys do i don't know i feel like anyone can do it because you kind of just like do it can anybody sing given the appropriate instruction yeah absolutely for the moment you think can. so <laughs> matt says no i, I cannot sing. <laughs> you don't think if you had the right instruction someone could teach you to sing a little at least no <laughs> <laughs> so you're just not even gonna try well, there's other things like audio i could probably pick up before i could Pick up a tune. Hey, like Judge Smale said, the world needs ditch diggers too. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, recap again with the show choir and the camp, how you register and, and uh, how many people you're looking for and such. Um, we're going to keep registrations open till tomorrow afternoon uh, around 5. Um, you can go to the Facebook page. Is it Good Times Show Choir? Yeah, or Good Times West or WV. Yeah. Um, so just find it on Facebook and then there's a Google link that you go and sign up for the camp and like I said you can pick which category your kid is most interested in and then they'll get paired up or paired up with the different peers and um, it should be a really fun time and I believe it's open to the public to come see on Sunday too but it's a fundraiser for good times which you know they have to fundraise all year so yes, it's a new fundraiser that they're trying and I think it'll be really fun so we hope that we have a lot of people what's the peer to camp camper ratio one on one um, it's more than that. It's um, three or no. I'm going to say like five or six um, per like group. Per group. So per, and we're hoping for 15 per group. So it'd be a six to 15 ratio. That's uh, <laughs> two to, I'm trying to do the math in my head. But <laughs> yeah, it's not going to come out even. Two to five. <laughs> yeah, it's a two to five ratio. So do you know where your big trip's going to be next year? Um, For good times? Yeah. Ooh. Not sure yet. We'll probably talk about that towards the end of the year. Because I, I assume, are your trips all done for this year, or do you have one more? Um, I think we're all done for this year. Okay. Yeah, so, they just won Grand Champs last weekend, on um, their last competition. Two ago? Yeah, yeah, so they had their final competition just recently in Richmond. Richmond, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. You Thank won? You. 
Yeah. Oh, like, for the category they won Grand Champ. Yeah. Great. So it was great into the season. Mm -hmm. But they have auditions next week for anyone oh, yeah. who's interested in good times. Um, anyone going into the high school next year at Martinsburg can try out. Um, all the information is on the Instagram. You try it. <laughs> <laughs> they could teach you to sing, Matt. They could, but you don't want to. I think there there's a better use of their resources than than Stay, trying to fix. Just me. staying in your lane, man. Just staying in your lane. <laughs> and circling back to the By George uh, Museum again, uh, if it could, Aubrey, you open uh, to reopen in May. Yep. And um, if you guys want to follow us on Facebook, that's the best place right now. While we're rebuilding the website, and I'm posting different camps with the different themes that we're going to be offering this summer and then once we reopen there's going to be new exhibits that come in every month of different things and um, we hope to bring in authors and different art things and stem things and robotics things mm -hmm. and reading clubs so mm -hmm. i hope it's very happening and like a little happy hub where kids can come and experience like the history of martinsburg but also get inspired with new things how long has it been closed down they closed during COVID, so it's been closed down for four years say, almost. I say, it's been a little while, right? Yeah. Were you very familiar with it at all when it was open? No, actually. The last <laughs> time I was there was a field trip with Lily when she was in kindergarten, and I had never gone back. Um, so the job kind of came as a surprise, and I was, I'm was i really excited about it. Yeah, that's cool. And what do you hope your hours of operation will be once you are able to reopen? Um, we're going to be open on Tuesdays from 10 to 2, for, and we're going to be offering like a homeschool group on that day. Um, and then Thursdays from 10 to 2, we'll be doing some kind of a activity um, that will kind of help bring people in with a craft. And then Saturdays from 10 to 4. Um, we may en end up adding a Friday afternoon, like after school, 3 to 6, too. All right, so. very good. And you will be instructing at, at uh, by George this summer, you're saying? Yes. You're doing a, a STEM camp with the kids, too. Mm -hmm. little little STEM, little song and dance. <laughs> Just musical so. stem musical stem <laughs> that'd be great that would be fun actually yeah. <laughs> why could you not do musical stem I, you, I don't know why you couldn't you know combine the best you of should. both worlds I think you should that would work hey thanks for coming in good to see you both thank you, thank you. Aubrey and Lily uh, Urban there at